In Andrew Perka's 1996 article, Service Learning, A Balanced Approach to Experiential Education, he grapples with the subject of a common language or vocabulary for service learning and suggests some ways to think about learning activities to determine whether or not they qualify as service learning. He suggests that though the vocabulary of engagement has evolved since the 1970s, we still have a long way to go before we have developed an accurate, understandable, and widely adopted set of terms that accurately describe service learning activities. Terms like cooperative education, internships, field study, experiential education, and even service learning can end up in a jumbled, confusing mess. Furthermore, the terms are not often applied consistently from one institution to another. He suggests that one way to determine whether or not an activity meets the goals of service learning is to look at the balance between the recipient and provider on the spectrum of who is the beneficiary. Also, he suggests, one might look at the balance between service and learning about what is the focus of the activity. The system of hierarchy he offers shows the spectrum of beneficiary and focus in terms of the specific activity. So the activities of volunteering and internships, for example, are at the extremes of the spectrum for both beneficiary and focus. Community service and field work are closer to a balance between emphasis for the beneficiary and emphasis for the focus. Service learning is at the pinnacle of student outcomes because it nicely balances the beneficiary and the focus between recipient and provider and between service and learning. Volunteering has a focus on service and the beneficiary is primarily the recipient. Community service also has a service focus, with the beneficiary also primarily the recipient. Field education has a focus on learning, and the primary beneficiary is the provider of the opportunity. Internships, the focus is also on learning, and the primary beneficiary is also the provider. Service learning programs are distinguished from other approaches to experiential education by their intention to benefit both the provider and recipient of the service equally, with equal focus on the benefit of the service and learning outcomes inherent in the activity. Because many activities are complex and might fit into several categories at once, a two-dimensional diagram is still not adequate to describe fully the possibilities of engaged scholarship. As the practice evolves, so too will naming the components of engagement work, which will bring the field closer to a common, useful vocabulary and naming system.